Even the wealthiest people are worried about whether we're going to get a tax cut or not. A new study shows millionaire confidence, I don't know how you measure it, but millionaire <laughs> confidence plunged in the month of May. It was the biggest monthly drop in 13 years. Economics professor Peter Morisi is with us. Peter, if the rich are worried about getting a tax cut, shouldn't the rest of us be worried about getting a tax cut? Absolutely. Things aren't moving very quickly in Washington. The administration is having trouble putting appointees in place and getting things done. Uh, and also, there's just a lot of division in the Congress. You know, last night I you know, was hearing uh, fables at a dinner of, you know, maybe we'll have a 25-year window on the tax cuts so we can, we can add to the deficit and so forth. Uh, my feeling is, is that they don't have an easy way out to get the kinds of tax cuts they want. The millionaires are smart enough to understand how the tax code works, and they're starting to get skeptical. It's just the legislative agenda as well. I mean, there is so much on it. Sooner or later, you have to weed something out. You've got to say, this goes, that goes, if you want to actually do one or two things. Don't they you? got three things up there that they can't get done, and they never seem to be able to get done. Yeah. Health care, taxes, and the budget, and they're all interrelated. Mm -hmm. Given that there are 535 members of Congress, it is an absolute scandal that they can't get this done. The real problem up there is the Republicans cannot compromise among themselves and reach a unified position the way Democrats seem to be able to do. You, uh, Peter, you're right. Hold on a second. Steve Forbes <laughs> is with me. The fault lies with the Republicans, doesn't it, Steve? Uh, starting with the House Ways and Means Committee, the Tax Writing uh, Committee in Congress, uh, Paul Ryan and his Speaker, they're still pushing this crazy border tax, which gets in the way of pure tax cuts. The way they get around from the lateness on doing the tax cuts, as we've discussed before, is make it retroactive to now or the beginning of the year. That would forgive the sins of uh, the tardiness. But they, I just don't know, uh, Peter's right. Why don't they just do it? Make a big one. Don't get caught up in the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, and say, you can't do this, you can't do that. Just do it. They hire the parliamentarians. Just do it. Make well, it big. Well, come on, hey, yeah. come, Peter, come back in again. Why don't they just do it? Well, what they have to do is suspend the rules of the House so that they can go to a 25-year window. They're going to have to approve that, the 51 together as a majority, if they're going to have a tax cut that increases the deficit. I don't see why they shouldn't do that simply because the Democrats are choosing to not behave responsibly. They simply choose not to acknowledge the legitimacy of Donald Trump as president. Chuck Schumer is the head of the class when it comes to that. Yesterday we saw it with his knee-jerk reaction to what is a very creative and sound proposal for our air traffic control infrastructure, by example. Okay. Uh, P Peter, uh, what, one, one thing on this uh, thing about a budget deficit. Uh, they can make the rules and what assumptions you make. Why don't they just assume four or five percent growth? Deficit disappears. Get the thing done. You don't even have to change the rules to do it. Just do it. Well, the thing about that is that uh, uh, the, the optics would be bad. Uh, oh, boo they, hoo. The optics well, are going to be worse. They don't get that tax cut. <laughs> look, I look, well, let me say, there's let no me tax cut. That the look, optics are even worse. Uh, no matter what they do, I mean, the optics are bad because they're going to be accused by Chuck Schumer, the New York Times, and all the other networks of, of catering anyway? to the rich. All I the trick is to do is, this as palatable as possible. All I hear is we've got to do this. We hope to do this. We're working day and night on doing this. <laughs> and it doesn't happen. I want to hear somebody say, listen. You've dropped the ball. You people are going to be toast. You are going to lose so big next year, it's not even funny. Well, Light McConnell fire reminds me these of people, for heaven's sake. Come on, let's see some fire here. McConnell reminds me of one of these students who's been in college six or seven years for a four year degree, and he wants to come back to his dad for more money. <laughs> you know, they, they're really, I'm, not, I, I'm just no, no, wondering no, what's no, it going to no, take wait, to wait, boot wait, this wait, guy I'm not, not, not going to do this. Done. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to say Ryan's wrong or the Freedom Caucus is wrong. That's not the point. The Republican Party is not behaving like a governing party. They are incapable of coming together. And people should say that and blame them. Well, we just did, but they're not listening. They probably turned the volume down. They like to watch Fox, but when you say things like that, they turn the volume down. They don't want to hear about it. They want to go back into their little factions and continue to campaign for purity, to kill the good in, 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 for want of the perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that one. All right. Peter Morisi, I'll calm down. Thank you very much. <laughs>